Well, well, hello there. It's me again, the Snack Commissioner. Howdy. Welcome to uh, February. And as you know, February is one of the staple cardinal one of four candy holidays. They're very important. They're they're part of an epic quest. And let's uh, let's do a quick interlude. Explain the importance of kind of a survival guide to Halloween candy, real quick. And then we'll get into the uh, the meat and potatoes, so to speak. So first off, what do we have here? Why wow, it's we were made for each other. Well, ain't that just gorgeous and cute? One of my favorite mythological creatures. And what's inside? It's not what it was really inside, but it is a Reese's heart. So every one of the major four candy holidays has a Reese's. Not Reese's. If you say Reese's, you're going to get a uh, snack citation. I'm sorry, but that's a demerit. But all four, you collect them, what are you going to get? I think you might unlock some sort of mystic candy treasure. Perhaps a map to a candy pyramid. But anyway, we all know those are great. Mm-mm. So good. What we got here? Why? Tiny conversation hearts. Now, I say these can be used for not eating them, but like cow traps. Throw them on the floor of your enemies and make them stub their toe unless they're wearing heavy boots. Um, or you could uh, write little secret messages on them. Or write a poem to your lover. What we have here? Here it is. It's a whole bunch of candy treasures. This one looks like a turtle. I got it's a gym badge I got for beating Turtle Man. This one. That's that candy pyramid. You collect all four of the Reese's from every holiday. Why well, by gum you might open the candy pyramid. Where is it? I don't know. Parts unknown. Fun little, fun little myri myriad of candy treasures. Happy holidays. Anyway, let's get into uh, the show, as it were. We got our snack owl. We got our handy dandy cheese cleaver. And we got our universal yums box. I don't even know where it's from. We're going to find out together. Don't point a weapon at someone. That could be dangerous. Gotta be professional. So this again is the uh, the Yumberly the Yumberly Best Box, biggest size we got. I right, sat next to Yumberly Best in third grade. Here. You just open all the all the tape with the cheese cleaver. You just put that there carefully. See what we got. Oh boy, it's Ukraine. Isn't that wonderful? We're going to learn so much about the Ukraine. Here's the instructions. As always, let's learn a useful fact. The world's largest blank was built in Ukraine. Was it A, barn, B, fire hydrant, C, crossword puzzle, or D, fishing rod? Let's go to... It was the crossword puzzle. The biggest one ever. So that's, you know, in the Ukraine, they're known for their puzzles and they're known for their snacks. That's what we know so far. Good to know. We'll refer back to this for allergy information and instructions. And anything else we need to know is very useful. What's our sticker? This V-Day, I found eternal love with Ukrainian yums. That's very precious. So precious they gave us two. So, let's see what we got. Prostata patata. Bacon slices. Ooh, that looks fun. Looks like a little Frito or uh, a crisp of some sort. Airy. Kind of like puffed rice, but not puffed rice because it's clearly potato. 
It's good. It tastes like bacon. I enjoy that. Kind of light. Not too much to it. Good flavor. See what we got next. Crostata Patata again. It looks like it's a popular brand there in the Ukraine. Um, those are a lot of letters and uh, I'm not going to offend the Cyrillic alphabet or Russia or Ukraine or its proud people. So I'm not going to try to say backwards C's. These are onion rings. Ooh, I was expecting a Funyun. A little bit of that sty flavored styrofoam flavor, but a good, good flavor to it. The texture is very smooth. It's very uh, processed, but not in a bad way. So, so much that I, I did eat three of them. Uh-oh, Bonnie Fruit. Summer Mix, 25% juice. Let's uh, undo the claspers. That'll be easy to resale. reseal. Don't resale them, they're, they're mine. Crinkle, crinkle. This one looks like a black cherry. That's a nice and fruit and gummy. It's a, it's a good gummy. It's powdered with a nice crystalline fine sugar, not too coarse, very fine. Um, I think gummy enthusiast, enthusiast would really uh, appreciate this one. It's got um, a nice taste to it. Tip a missy. That's another language I can't understand all of them, but I can tell it's from Roshan. Uh-oh. We got a whole cake. We're gonna use the cheese cleaver for this. I just cut myself off a, a pretty thin slice. Looks like there's some sort of brown, possibly chocolate, or, or some sort of nut flavored uh, cream inside. I'm not looking into the direction, so I, these are all mysteries to me. That is a fine confection. Now, I think it might be chocolate and nut. I can't really tell the difference. It almost has a coffee taste to it, actually. I would say this is actually a fine coffee or tea cake. I don't know how it is served in the Ukraine, but that's how I would serve it. This is a nice confection. I enjoy this immensely. I like that we get, like, not just bags of chips, but a whole Swiss cake roll, a whole cake. Not, not a Swiss cake. It's a Ukraine roll. Crostata Patata again. Come back here. You're getting away with all the snacks. These are shaped snacked oval with flavor of veal and adjika. I'm going to reveal my ignorance. I do not know what adjika is. Someone in the comments, you can tell me. Or I can live in ignorance. I'm okay with that too. Um, Another little crisp. Another airy bite. These are very fluffy, airy, potato-y. I can kind of taste the veal in that it's sweet and or, or salty and kind of savory, and it kind of tastes like a like a chicken basket cracker, chicken biscuit cracker, in a basket. You can put one there. Put these all in a basket. Um, there's like a savory kind of like bouillon flavor to it. Not real meat, but like meat flavored chips, and that's good. I, I don't mind those at all. Um, darn if I don't know what Ajika is. 
And I'm probably not pronouncing it right. If I say Ajika one more time wrong, I might summon an Ajika creature. So we might have to fight that with our meat cleaver. Cheese cleaver. Ajika cleaver. Homemade bread chips with garlic in a nice little bag. Some of these are easily easily resold, resealed. Why am I saying that word wrong? A bag within bag, the mystery abounds. Oh, these are bark chips. These are uh, these are like rye chips. They're a little more rustic than the ones I'm used to. They're thick. They taste like a nice uh, hard baked crusty. Rye bread, and I imagine they would be amazingly dipped in like your favorite beer cheese or or s sort of sauce. They're they're good. These are tasty. We'll just fix that later. Bag number two: homemade bread chips with onion rye wheat bread chips. Uh oh. We got our first ceiling mishap. Ooh, we averted that crisis. Bags within bags. You know, these taste exactly the same except less garlic. More onion. I think those ones are a little more striking. These ones are a little more subtle. Both are good. Put them in soup. You know, those are almost almost good as a crouton, I would say. I wouldn't compare them exactly to the rye chips we have here as just an out-of-the-box snack. I'd say those are part of a meal. They're robust. Wafer cake with hazelnuts. Now, I've always been fond of wafers. I like a textural element in my candy. I don't really like just a candy bar that's nothing but chocolate. Um, I like a little interplay. Ooh, look at that. That, that is filled with creamy ch cocoa goodness. Nice wafer. Great crunch, great chocolate coating, great chocolate cream filling. This is a keeper. Wafer cake, you've done it again. Golden chips, potato, with flavor of wasabi. There's a lion on it. Oh, oh boy. What in the heck? This is a chip. A whole bag is just full of long chips. I have not been familiar with this type of packaging before and I am impressed. Now, I think because there's a line on it and also it says wasabi, this might be king of the spicy roots. Um, that. Golden chips are very good. I don't think they're that spicy. I think the wasabi adds a really interesting savory spicy element that adds to the chip and of all the potato crisps I think so far, this one's the best.
Probably because of the line. We get two of the same. I'm only going to open one. This is erosion. That word. And it is another delightful moist cake. A sponge with layers of creme or cream on the, in on the uh, inside. Now it did come to me moist when I open it, but I think the cake is just relatively dry. Um, it's not bad. Um, it was very good. I just don't have much to say about it. If you ever get a mysterious box with one of these in it, you should enjoy it. Polis. Chocolate coated wafer bar with almonds. I'm excited. Uh, this is a pretty chocolate flavored uh, uh, forward box. And all the uh, savory elements have been kind of more on the potato side and uh, pretty good too. Let's get a little little uh, fraction off of that. A nice uh, sedimentary look at the different layers. You can see which one's the Cretaceous period and which one is the, the igneous formation. Pretty good. Almondy. Again, a little dry. Good wafer. Good, good chocolate. I think maybe a little waxy, but it's got a good, good aftertaste. It's rich and it, it's the gift that keeps on giving. Pardon me. I have to chew for a bit. This is a chewer here, chew here box all around. By the way, did anyone figure out the mystery drink? Because this is a different mystery drink. Let's figure that one out too. It's the second quiz. Polis, big bar. Pictures of caramels on it. That's because it's a wafer bar of caramel. This is just an aside that has nothing to do with anything. I really like it when candy bars are purple foil. They just seem a little, like, fancy. It's a big, big piece of that wafer. It's kind of hard to get a small sliver of a wafer. You gotta go big or go to your house. Spoiler alert, this wafer with caramel in it is even chewier than the other one. Very good, very delicious. Takes a bit to eat. This is this is almost a meal. Snack at your own peril. You'll enjoy it, but you might not be hungry later. Esmeralda Orange Zest Biscuits. I'm just excited for all of these. Like, this is a fun box. We have the texture on that. This cookie is crunchy and a little dry. It's got some orange zest flavor to it and I think little candied orange chunks in it too. It's hard to tell the texture because it all blends with the uh, the crust of the biscuit inside. Um, 
is good. I think this is a more subtle, grown-up taste. I don't think kids will dislike it, but there are uh, intricacies to the flavor profile of this one that I think takes a more advanced palate. But yeah, it's a good one. Let's see if it pairs with mystery drink. Ooh, it does indeed. Roshan is at it again. Caramel bubble chocolate. I like all the chocolate offerings in this boxes because they're all, uh, they all got texture. This one has bubbles in it. Here we are. Now, this might be the first time that you and I have to have the wet chocolate conversation. Now, those cocoa solid lipids, they're, they, you can do a lot with them. You can make chocolate, you can make dark chocolate, you can make milk chocolate, and you can make white chocolate. And I think white chocolate is most controversial of its brothers and sisters. It is not for everyone. Sometimes, it is too sweet in one note. Other times, it pairs well with macadamia nuts. Other times, I don't like it at all. Other times, it's good. So let's see what this one... It also melts in your hand tremendously. Uh, yeah. Um, let's see. Uh-oh. It's not a bad white chocolate. It's melting furiously. Because there's bubbles and air molecules in it. So this, the heat of my hands is melting it. And although there is textural interplay because it is chocolate with air holes in it, and it's not a bad white chocolate, I'm, I'm sorry, but that's a little one note. The note is, ah, it's a note. Sorry, white chocolate, I think you'll do better next time, and I don't think you were a bad showing, but it's what you do when you play with white chocolate, sometimes you get burned. I do gotta say that the aftertaste is rich. It, it, it is a give that keeps on giving. Maybe the note isn't, ah, uh, maybe it's, uh, I don't know. Javier. Ooh, that sounds mysterious. It's a creamy deluxe toffee bar. And to me, it kind of looks like little caramel frosting dollops. If I saw this in the store, I I would buy it. You know what? It perfor perforates pretty well. You can just tear one square off. Sometimes you tear a square of a candy bar off and you got a little widget, wedge it, and you don't know what to do with it. You're like, I just wanted one square and now I ruined the square next to it and I have too much of this one. What's a girl to do? But this time, this is pretty much perfect. Chewy, caramely, fudgy toffee. It's great. This is pretty good. All of them are pretty good this time. I, I like some of those great wafers. But guess what? It's not over yet. We got the yum bag. Oh, the organizer in me is gonna hate that. Milky Splash Toffee? Well, I just had a piece of toffee. Ooh. You think it's like a, a circus peanut or something at first, and then you chew into it, and it's a nice, creamy piece of toffee. I don't know why I'm not as enthusiastic as I just said it, but still very good. And guess what? It's got a cute little cat on the wrapper. Uh. Well, we're going to have to try Minky Binky. Cause it's got a monkey on it. And it's double wrapped. 
It's also a piece of toffee. Hmm. That's milkier, smoother, creamier. The one with the cat was a little gritty, and this one is more of that milk toffee. Melts in your mouth. I like that one a lot. You know, these toffees might be my very favorite of the whole box. Minky Binky Purple! Um, it's a filled toffee, but it does not say what it was filled with. Some sort of reddish purple jam. These are fun. They're kind of like gushers, except toffee filled with little fruits. Um, the fruit is subtle and kind of has a, I don't want to name the fruit because it might be a European elderberry fruit or some such that is put in a cordial or chutney. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm one to uh, admit my ignorances. But these are all very good. Um, let's see if anything else seems interesting. They actually kind of all do, which is a problem for the editor. I'm sorry, this is called Crazy Bee. We're opening that immediately. It is very soft and squishy. And I can see the beating heart of gumminess inside. This is a filled gummy. I just love that. It's very sweet. That's my favorite of the gummies, I think. I don't I couldn't tell you what fruit it was. It's fruit candy fruit. And there are three kinds of fizzy candy in here. This is an orange fizzy boom, a green fizzy boom, and a red fizzy boom. I'm gonna go with red. Because normally that would be my least favorite flavor of the three, and let's, uh, let's be interesting. I dropped that one, so we're going to go with orange. Uh-oh. It was pre-detonated. There is a bunch of fizzy powder in my hand. It's just blowing in my mouth. There's soda bicarbonate in my mouth. It's not an unpleasant feeling. It's also not a great one. Fun with chemistry. Well, that's all the time we have for tonight. Join us again when we open up more international treasures. We won't be in the Ukraine next time. We might be in some place mysterious and powerful. Or it might be someplace romantic with a rich history. Either way, I had a great time with you all tonight. I hope you enjoy your time with me again. Goodbye! This is the scissor editing song. Nothing can possibly go wrong. I almost cut myself.